semua bu. Mama lihat juga aku deh. So That's better, isn't it? Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me?
have fun, Bobby. See ya. See you when you get back. Have fun. Okay.
Hi. Hi, Jane. Can you? Hi. It's... Oh, yeah. Hello, Hi. it's Mark, actually. Um, Hi, my Mark. life sorted it out, but I'm Mark. No worries. Hi, Mark. Where are you? Uh, Starbridge in the West Midlands. Oh, okay. Nice one. Hang on a second. <laughs> Sorry. And where's that accent from? Just thinking about she should get three more quotes on. Um, I'm from Melbourne. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to, I, I was, when I was a kid, I was a £10 pom, so I used to live in Melbourne. Oh, really? St Kilda, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. That's where my dad's family um, lived. Well, there, oh, and nice. they lived there in St Kilda um, along Beaconsfield Parade. My great grandfather built the house there. And oh, right. uh, and uh, they also were farmers up in the Riverina district. But um, yeah, we we uh, start out there, and then we moved to uh, Dunedin in New South Wales. No way! And, uh, That's where yeah. they're from. Is it? That's so oh, wow. Um, well, <laughs> it's they're actually from Barubin, which is between Hay and Dunedin. Oh, right. okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I just I just finished. Well, you know the Hay Plains. Um, just, not really. Well, if it was you a long, long time ago. I was, I was, I was about eight or nine when we came back, so it's a long time ago. Oh, rightio, yeah, no, fair enough. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so that's really a long time ago. So you didn't like grow up there, you really grew up here. No, no, we emigrated and then we had to come back, so uh, my mother got ill, so uh, okay. but yeah, so but yeah. Well, so now you so are you a painter? Um, not really, no, I, I, I like art. Um, I've done a little bit, I've done stained glass making, I've done pastels, I dabbled in watercolours very briefly, I didn't enjoy watercolours too much, but okay. um, uh, but yeah, I, I just, it's, it's just, you know, you've got to do something during like, these weird times, haven't you, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. So welcome everyone, put your videos on and we'll all meet each other, that would be really cool. If you want, if you don't want to go on video, who have we got? Cassandra. And I don't know who A is. It's Abby, Angie. Angie. It's just that my, uh, if I put the video on, I've got an unstable connection. That's I fine, Abby. You can, you can stay audio. So I was just having a chat to um, Mark and uh, we were just trying to get some, I mean, not that it really matters sort of what level it, it, that you're at, because I kind of fancy that my process anybody you know I mean I teach it to kids and stuff anybody can use it but um it's kind of I mean for me it's to get to know where, where people want to go with it would be good what about you Cassandra are you in Melbourne yeah what time is it there Pardon? what time what is it time? there uh, what time is it that just after 11 at night oh okay oh, wow. yeah cool i saw a picture of your doggy so cute i know right he's pretty special he's really special i'm loving hearing that australian accent can you see me no put, put your video on oh, i don't think you want to see me <laughs> no i do i do but if you're not comfortable with it then that's fine this brush is a bit rubbish i'm in the pajamas yeah, you're in your PJs. That's all right. <laughs> it's okay. But um, oh, you don't need to. It's fine, Cassandra. So I'm just gonna. I'm just. This is what I'm. I'm. I'm really doing this video from start to finish. But I'm quite a fast painter, as you can see. Um. Well, as you can see, you can't really see. I'm just prepping the canvas. But I like to put a um. A sort of pinky red base because I find if you're painting pets or, or people, sort of gives you that fleshy undertone. I would I would give it a go. You know, I don't know what surfaces people have got. Can people put in the chat what surfaces they're gonna draw or paint on? That'd be ace. Nathan, can you come back? Oh hang on a second. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I forgot to turn my phone off, would you believe? What a ding dong. Sorry about that. 
Where did Cassandra go? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she. Oh, hi, Cassandra. Can can you put in the chat what you're drawing on or painting on? Or are you just going to watch it? Are you just going to watch it and then... No, I'm doing it. I'm basically, I'm copying you. So have you got a canvas? Yeah. Oh, good on you. So um, what colours have you got? Uh, I've just got these random, and I've got a few colours. I don't know how to actually... Um, I don't know how to get you to show, to, for me to show you what I'm doing. I don't. Oh, um, well, yeah, what, you, could, you don't know how to put your video on? Yeah. Oh, okay. It should be in the bottom left corner. Oh, okay. Start um, video. Yeah. There you are. There I am. Oh, cool. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, good on you. Yeah, so you're putting down a red base. That's cool. Yeah, any any warm colour is good. Okay. So what about you, Mark? Are you have you got? Uh, yeah, I'm just putting down uh, well, pink base basically. Okay. Onto um, a canvas. Cool. And who's who's AE? Abby, it's Abby. Oh, sorry, Abby. I'm sorry, Abby. Um, Angie. Um, do yeah. we have source material in the sense of what you're painting from that we are all going to have a go with, or do we find our own source material? So I think you find your own, you can paint your own pet was the idea. Sorry, Abby, if I didn't explain that very well. Like if you ideally have a photo or just paint a pet um, from your phone. So if you've got a, got your phone, if you've got a photo of your pet on your phone. Have you? Sorry, I lost you, Angie. If, uh, basically our own source material. Yes. Okay, sorry, I can't hear you at times because you keep freezing on me. Oh, okay. I, I hope it's not my connection. I, I should have a good video connection. But um, so what I'm suggesting is if you don't have a printout of your pet, mm -hmm. just use a photo from your phone. Or you can paint the dog that I'm doing. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Summer. Okay, so it's up to you. Have you got a phone with a pet photo on it? Um, I'm going to find something. I'm just going to quickly Google something. Not a problem. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, cool. I'm just saying that I would recommend painting your own pet because it's just much more interesting, I feel like. But maybe it's good to do something less objective to start with. <laughs> I, yeah. See how you go. What are you, who are you painting, Mark? Do you want to paint the dog I am or do you want to paint what dog or cat or whatever? What Sorry? Is, what, what did you think you were going to paint, Mark? Did oh, you... me? Yeah. Well, I'm painting uh, my dog, which is a Border Terrier called Toto. Awesome. Border Terrier. Have you got a photo there? I have, right in front of me. Show us. Oh, can you, okay. Can you show us? Is that yeah. all right? Hold on. Oh, that's fantastic. There he is. Beautiful. Is that is that a photo or a painting? It is, yeah, yeah. It's oh a photo. God. Yeah, yeah. See, that's going to be awesome to paint <laughs> because it's quite, it's kind of a paint, painterly photograph, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what are you thinking, Cassandra? Do you want to paint? Well, this is the photo that I had, which is... Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Perfect. That's perfect. Okay. Oh. So, okay. This is going to drive really quickly. It's really hot here. Cassandra, what's the weather like in Melbourne? Uh, it's, it's been okay. Like, it's, it's winter, so it's, yeah, it's, it's cold. But we've had some really nice sunny days. Yeah, cool. So, um, so yeah, get a bit of blue sky. Because we're in ISO, you know, in yeah. Melbourne at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So, lockdown, stage four. So, That's, can't that do much. <laughs> Yeah, that's so Aussie to like shorten it to ISO. We're in ISO. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I haven't heard anyone here say that before, but I might use that. We're in ISO, mate. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I hope um everyone's okay, fit and well. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. It's just Not you know it is what it is. You know, yeah. it's just you know. Yeah, hard yeah, 100%. to. 
So, okay, someone's got watercolour. Abby, have you, what paints are you using? Are you using watercolour paints? Sorry, yes, I am. Okay. I've got the Windsor & Newton professional set. Nice. I, I, I'm, I mean, because I'm using acrylic, watercolour is a bit different. So you're just going to have to like, I mean, have you, have you been using, have you used watercolours before? Yes, yes, I have, Angie. Okay. Um, I've been practising with them. So I need to go from light to dark. Is that correct? No. No. I'll, I'll just take you through how I do it. Okay. Um, because I don't know anyone that does it this way, but it really works for me. Okay. And I, I sell a lot of pet portraits and I, I sell paintings. So I just, at the beginning of the journey of sharing it with people. So this is, I have done some, uh, I've done some recording of uh, painting courses, but this is the first Zoom that I've done painting. But I feel like it really suits me um, to see people. It's, I love that I can see you on video. So if everyone's still okay with that. If you want to make me bigger and not look at yourself, I don't know if people know, you can put it on speaker view or you can put it on gallery and see what everyone else is doing as well. Okay. So um, if you, um, it's cool if I can't see what you're doing, but I think ideally it'd be cool if I could see what you're doing and everyone else can see what you're doing. But if you don't want to, like, that's totally fine. Whatever you want to do. I think the main thing is that you can see what I'm doing, yeah, so you can learn. Okay. So if anyone's got any questions or anything, just write them in the chat or speak up. The audio sounds okay at the moment with everybody. Um, well, I know, Mark, you're unmuted, Cassandra, you're muted, but I mean, so far it sounds okay. So if you want to say something, just unmute yourself. Okay. And speak because there's only four of us. Um, which is cool. I don't know where the other 15 people that bought tickets are. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried that I did do one post where I said it's, <clears throat> it started at 2.30. So. Mm. Mm. I'm just gonna water too. So we might get a few people that's come at 2.30, but it, it'll be okay. I'll just quickly go over what we've done. So, the other thing I do is like, so I've got a hairdryer right here. It's covered in paint, so. Uh -huh. Hairdryer. Oh, I was thinking that. Putting the um, heater on. So, anyway, you probably haven't got a hairdryer. Oh my God, he's got a hairdryer. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, we've got we've got stuff to do with the picture now, so uh, you know you have probably got time to let it dry. But if you've got a hair dry, go for it, Mark. Just mute. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We don't want to hear everybody's hair dry. Anyway. Um, okay, so I'm going to go and get the photo of the pet that I'm painting. Um, so. I can't hear you, Cassandra, if you're talking to me. Someone else is there. Oh, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> who's that? Is oh, that your daughter? Huh? Yes, it's my daughter. And I was trying to get her to make you big and get me out of it, but I can't. So if you go to the top right where it says speak of you. Oh, uh, exit full screen. It will say gallery view. So click on gallery view and it will go to speak of you. And then it's. Oh, it is on speak of you, I think. Pardon? No, I'm strong. Oh, there it is. Yes, we're good. Okay. okay, cool. Okay. So, what I've done is I've got a printout of this dog, which I'm doing today. It's a beagle. It doesn't really matter what you're painting. So, so, so my, this process, which I'm about to share with you, the Angie Porter five step process, if anyone can think of a better name than that, tell me in the chat. Um, is it can be applied to anything so i've even been just this week starting to do some people portraits 
So if you wanted to paint people, you can also use this process. But anyway, we're going to get on with it now and I'll stop yabbering. So I don't know if people have seen my paintings. I'll show you a few so you can get where I'm coming from. Okay, so this is my dog, Bruce. There's a Jack Russell. And sometimes I write the name of the dog in the corner here because that's nice. Um, and there's a French artist in the 18th century, probably the most most famous Western animal painter, Rose Bonheur. And she used to always put the animal's name um, in the corner of the, of the canvas. See, I'll show you, I've got some of her work here. Oh, I ripped it, that's right, we'll leave that. Anyway, her name's Rose Bonheur if you wanna look her up and, and do some research into animal portraiture. So this is another one I just finished called Mini. And, um, a mini is like three different types of, and including a Jack Russell. Um, so I usually just do a really, um, just one color background. And um, so that one was blue, but I usually just leave the pink um, or if people wanna have like a particular color. So I just finished um, one on the weekend where she wanted, I think I've thrown the piece of paper out, but she gave me like the tiniest piece of paper with the color and she said, this is the color I want for the background. Um, so I don't know how people are with mixing their colors, but um, yeah, so anyway, it was quite easy. I just matched the color and she was really happy. So, so that's my style. A lot of, you know, other pet portrait artists, they might like put in a background, you know, the dog in a landscape or, you know, little bow ties or things like that. You know, that's not me. My pet portraits are a one colour background and then really just a focus on the dog. Yeah, so probably in the in the tradition of Rose Bonheur or also George Stubbs. Um, yeah, I've got one. If you've, if you've been to the National Gallery in England, you might have seen Whistle Jacket. He's like this massive painting um, of a horse. And, but he also did dogs and other animals as well. But George Stubbs is probably a little bit of inspiration as well. I used to work next door to the portrait gallery. I'm going to stop talking about me in a minute. Um, I used to work next door to the National Gallery. So I used to go in into the, from the portrait gallery into the uh, National Gallery in London and um, look at the, look at the animal, at the animal painting. So anyway, so what I'm doing is we're going to do summer. I'm going to do summer, but get your, um, so what I normally do is I would print that, but I would also print a black and white one where I can see the tones. Okay. So if you wanted to like for now, because I didn't say to everyone, print, print out a black and white one. And then, you know, because I just feel like it was maybe getting a bit complicated. But if you wanted, if we, if you wanted to say do another workshop another time, we could we could have all that covered. But I'm telling you now what to do, and you can just go away and do it if you want. So a black and white one, and then I also do another black and white one, which is a high contrast. Okay. okay so yeah. so you can see it's exaggerating the light areas and the dark areas, but it will really help you finish up with a really sick pet portrait. So, so what I'd recommend now is, is, is just thinking about like where on the canvas you want to put the dog or the cat. Is everybody painting a dog? Yeah. Yeah. Abby, are you painting a dog? I've gone for a tiger. A tiger. Yeah, good on you. So that doesn't matter really, um, but I'll stop sort of saying dog, dog or tiger. It doesn't matter. I'm fine. Yeah. Okay, so tiger's good, tiger's good. Um, I've got a leopard on the go um, that I'm painting at the moment. So how come you're painting a tiger, Abby? Do you like tigers? Oh, I can't hear it's you. The Hello? It's the first one I found. <laughs> the first animal you found? Yeah, I just... Do you like phone? It's the first one I found on my phone. I thought, let me just go for that one. Do you like tigers? Someone sent it me. 
Oh. So I just thought it's quite nice just to draw. Yeah, cool. No worries. Tigers are good. So what I'm going to do now is get the shape of my animal on the on the canvas. So you can choose where to put it and, and what size. But what I want to do first is get the shape in your head. So you cut around, cut around the animal. So get the scissors to your photo. Okay. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So I would cut out the animal like this, okay, to get around the edge. Does that make sense? Yep. So because this just means you can get the the all the proportions it's much easier to get the proportions right and everything else right when you've got the base shape correct. So anyway, so I'm just cutting out this like this. I'll just cut the lead off so I can just paint that in later. Yeah, so so that that's what I've got. So you can see it's the shape. So you might know from looking at the back of that that that's a dog, would you? <laughs> you might just think it's like a blob, a blob or something. But you can see, you get the shape, think about it as being like a rectangle. Does this make sense? Yeah, yeah. If you don't yeah, want to, if you my, don't my, want to my, cut your photo, that's fine. Don't cut. I it. will. I can cut it, but it's not um, a four size. Like it's not as big as. Yeah. So I'm not going to like paint it this size on the canvas. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it bigger. I mean, to cool. be honest, sometimes I do. If you've got an A4, if I was doing an A4 canvas, so I've got one here. So if I was doing an A4 canvas, if you wanna go cheats way. Yeah. It's, it's not even cheating. I mean, I feel like, I don't think there's anything as cheating in art. It's just like, you know, techniques to get where you wanna go. So. So you could just um, do it on an A4, one-to-one -one scale. But I thought, I also thought for the purposes of this workshop that that might be a bit small for you to see. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna go a bit bigger on here. But I kind of feel like once you've got this really simple shape, it's much easier to get it on here to reproduce that. Um, than looking at, you know, the whole picture and, you know, which bit goes where. So we're just going to start with the shape. And also, it's great if you are working one-to-one -one size. So, I mean, you could, get it, you could get it blown up A3, for instance. I could have got this blown up A3. So I could, and I have done this before, literally just, um, you know, just drawn around it. And then you've got the uh -huh. you know, so these are like brilliant techniques to just stop the whole headache of, oh, have I got, is the arm too big, are the ears too big? And because once you've got that, you can kind of see where the ears come to and where the legs come to and stuff. And it's much, much easier, much easier. So I'm, I'm into like just easy, quick, shortcut ways to um, get to a nice animal portrait. Um, so what I need to do now is I'll get, get some paints on my palette. Um, so I guess a, a quick chat about paints. So I use, I use different or different sort of paints, but I use artist quality paints. Um, I mean, sometimes I would use a cheaper paint, just maybe one of these. Um, Windsor and Newton Galleria paints to do a background or something, but I wouldn't I wouldn't use them to paint the animal. It goes a bit flat. I mean, it's all right. It's okay to use a cheaper paint, but it's like I guess the difference is like playing on a cheap guitar or playing on a really nice guitar. You know, I mean, it sounds a lot better, doesn't it? So, so maybe um, oh, Alice is here. Alicia's here. Okay, so I'm just going to say hi. She hasn't missed much. Hi, 
Hi, Alicia. Hello. Anyway, Alicia, unmute yourself and say good day. Tell me where you're from. Anyway, you don't have to go on video. You don't have to speak if you don't want to. We're going to crack on. So you haven't missed much. Um, I've just put this um, base warm colour. So either a pink or a red is fine on, on the canvas. So is, it, is yours, is everybody's dry? Is yours dry, Mark, now? Um, sort of. It's not too bad. Yeah, sort of is okay. So mine's not completely dry, but it's okay yeah. enough to start. So I'm just loading up a palette now. So I've got these Liquitex, these are the three paints I use and they're all artist quality, okay? So I was just explaining, Alicia, that I buy the, the, the you know, the most expensive paints I can afford and I use acrylic paints. Um, even though I, I love oil paints, I just find um, I'm quite a messy painter and as you can see, like I'm painting in my home and this is like the front room, which I, is my studio and that leads onto the front door. But anyway, it would just mean if I was working in oils, they, there's lots of smelly chemicals and solvents involved in that. Whereas acrylic, much easier, you know, you can just wash them out in um, water. Although, words of the wise, if you do get acrylic on your clothing, it, it probably won't come off. <laughs> so you need to wash things out straight away. Not that I really worry about things like that. So this, the five colours that I always use is Mars Black. So I'm just, I just use these plastic palettes. I can't even remember where I got them, but I've got like a hundred of them. So I just use those. Um, and I thought, because this is a video, I wanted you to see. So you can see, normally my palettes, they look like that, really messy. But I thought, oh my God, I'm going to go a nice new one today, special occasion, <laughs> just for you guys. So, um, yes, I might need to get some more black paint too. But I do like these plastic tubes. You can really squeeze the, um, squeeze the paint out. So that's Mars Black. But having said that, I use Mars Black. I've started to use something which is not black black, but a bit lighter, which is this which is a Payne's Grey. Um, and this is a Kryla uh, professional acrylic, heavy body. I like to use the heavy body paints, um, which are really, it's sort of the, the opposite of watercolour. Who's using watercolour again? Is it Abby? Anyway, th these, these are kind of thicker uh, acrylics, but it's the same, um, the same techniques that I'm going to teach you now that you would use. So I'm just loading up my palette with, so I'm using Payne's Grey instead of black. Sometimes black is a bit heavy. Um, and then I use, um, we're just going to put black and white in our palette at this stage. Because we just, our approach is going to be not light to dark, but it's going to be mixing, um, jumping between the black areas and the white areas and looking at the tones and yeah, gradually working to greys basically. But the, I'll just show you how I do it, which I feel like is, um, is, is an easier way. So then I've got white. So I'm putting some white, titanium white I use. Um, but you know, you can use any kind of white fine if you've just got like white it's cool but you know there are many many shades of white <laughs> okay so I've just got some black and white in my palette now and um I'm going to I mean usually if I'm painting a um depending on what color the dog is so this dog is mostly white so I might start with putting the white on. But what I would normally do is start with a high contrast black and white picture, which I'll show you and you'll see. 
So like that, and then I'd cut around that. And then it's really, really easy to see the light areas and the dark areas. Okay, so my scissors are here. So I'm just gonna cut this one out again. Anyway, so. So the other thing that's um, great about like having the shape cut out is you can look at the negative spaces as well. So when it, what I mean by negative space is, hang on. So the space, the space around the animal. So here you can look at this as well and sort of see, especially if you're working one to one on an A4. Where'd my A4 go? Or like for this, I'm, I, I was, I've been doing this one yesterday, which is like this bulldog. But to get the shape on the canvas, I was looking at, you know, what shapes these are. So that's what I mean by negative space. Okay. So I've got a black and white one and a colour one. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to put this shape onto here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to do it all in white. But use, I guess the, the if, if the animal is more white or more dark, so if it's more light, use a light colour. If most of the animal is dark, use a dark colour. Does that make sense? To do the shape. So we're going to do the whole shape. So, so don't worry. The other thing I really want to stress is like there's no mistakes because you can just paint over them. And actually, you really want it make mistakes because it's the way you learn and I can honestly say it makes for a good painting quite often to, to, to have a, to make a mistake and then think oh what could I actually that looks good so anyway so don't be scared about making mistakes so so I guess this is just like a rectangle yeah you could think about we're just going to like paint a rectangle on the canvas yeah so, I mean, you could always just like do a rectangle first like that. Yeah. So, you know, that obviously <coughs> that took me one second. Right. And now I'm going to be a bit more precise and be a bit more careful. Yeah. So, um, so I'm just trying to get the shape uh, on, on the canvas. So I'm not looking at all that. And if that is distracting to you, because quite often it is, um, you know, get another copy. And just paint, you could paint, cover it in white. So I could, like, just paint this one because I've got another one, all white. Yeah, whatever. And then just see the shape a lot better. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to crack on here and, and get this, this shape of the dog. I mean, to be honest... You know, it's pretty rare that I would get it all right first time. It's really just an approximation. And I quite often, you know, I get towards the end of the painting and I'll have to move an eye or an ear slightly because it's not right. Because, because at the beginning, it's, it's hard to see exactly your picture. Whereas once you've been looking at your picture for an hour, You'll get really good at seeing um, at seeing what the where the proportions are exactly. Yeah. Okay. What are you are you painting along, Alicia? Hello. Oh. Yeah. You are. Yeah. What What are you painting in? Have you got your own picture or? Yeah, I have my own picture. You do? Where are you from? Texas. Pardon? Pardon? Texas. 
Oh, really? Oh, welcome. That's amazing. What time is it there? Currently, it's 8.30. 8.30 in the morning or evening? Yeah. In the morning? In the morning. Wow. So we're going across three time zones, guys. This is amazing. <laughs> Oh my God, Texas and Melbourne. Where in Texas are you? Because I, I, I used to, I lived in San Antonio for six months. Um, I live in College Station. It's near Houston. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we used to go shopping in Houston because they had bigger, bigger stores. But yeah. Oh, cool. Well, welcome. Um, yeah, welcome. So how did you find out about this, Alyssa? Hello? Okay. Oh, she probably just did a internet search. Okay, so I'm going, I just need to get some more white. So, what I was using there was a transparent white, I just realised. So, really, you want to use a, um, a, a non-transparent white. So, that's good for mixing with other colours. But, uh, see, you can see now, uh, now we're talking, now it's proper white. So, so just keep going with your shape and try and get the, the shape on the canvas. You don't have to put it in the middle, you know, you can put it on the side or wherever you think. But you can see, like, it's not about being exactamondo at this stage. Does it matter about your strokes? Like, mine's a bit, yours nah. looks really what? neat and mine looks really messy. Show me. Okay. It's, no, no, that's that's fine. I mean, the thing is, what are you using an acrylic paint? You probably yeah, want to. I'm using. Of it. Pardon? I haven't got a huge amount of it. I've only got little tubes, not massive. Oh, okay. Tubes. Yeah, so, yeah, you need to have. So, um, so depending on what size your canvas is, but yeah, you probably maybe want to have enough paint. And also, at this stage, I use really big brushes. And it's much easier to get into it because then, then it takes you like, you know, a few minutes to get all that done and you're not there going ring, 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 ring with your with the smaller paintbrush. Do you know what I mean? So it just stops frustration. Have you got a bigger tooth, uh, toothbrush? Have you got a bigger <laughs> paintbrush? You could use a toothbrush. Uh, no, this is my biggest. Okay, that's all right. Keep going. Just colour it in. And, um... Yeah, so I'm just the the I just want to make sure it's long enough. This this doggy, I feel like I might run out of room here. And then this is sort of here. That's all right. So that's it. That's the first stage. Pretty simple, huh? Uh huh. I'm not going for perfection, but I guess um, to have a wet, uh, you know, a semi well defined shape that's just flat white, flat colour. Have you got a, a? Did you use white or black, Mark? Um, well, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm starting with white. I thought about it long and hard because he's. He's getting on and yeah. he is mostly grizzled now, apart right. from his ears and his nose and his eyes. So I thought I'd start with the white, but should I do the ears, the nose and the eyes in white as well? So, uh, no, don't worry about that yet. We're just doing yeah. step by step. Um, okay. So jumping ahead, uh, we're just going to do it in, in, in like step by, easy step by step. So we'll come, yeah. we'll come to that in a minute. So, but at this stage, it's just about the shape. And then we're going to okay. jump. We're going to jump really soon into tone. Okay. So when we do the okay. tone, we'll look at where the eyes are and the nose are and stuff. Um, okay. 
So what I was going to say was, um, I can't remember. There you go. <laughs> I, I can see that my paint wasn't completely dry and it's gone a bit pinky. Now I was going to ask you, that's right, about your dog. You said you went with white because it's got what some hairs that are graying. Yeah, it's a bit salt and pepper, really. Yeah. Um, everywhere apart from his eyes, his nose, and his ears, which are black. Yeah. yeah to a large extent. Because. So, I mean, yeah. he's, he's brown, basically, but yeah. he's now going a lot white. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing about, like, I, because I just did, I can't even remember the name of the breed, but it, it was like a. Um, it's like a greyhound with really wiry fur. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, the, it's got sort of bits of the wiry fur that sticks out is white. Yeah. So the dog definitely started with black and grey. And then to get the colour of the fur, it's about um, like, especially the white, wire, where the, it goes salt and pepper. So uh -huh. I, would, I would say this would be in painting people's grey hair as well. So yeah. if you were going to paint my grey hairs, which, well, there's not that many, but you would paint, you paint the base colour. So you paint the darker colour. All right. And then, and then the light hairs are the ones that catch the light. So then you would like do like a stroke towards the end. Mm-hmm. That, that would be like, that's where it catches the light. See, looking at your hair now, yeah. see, it's all dark, and then you've got sort of the light bits where the light's catching. Yeah. It, it depends on the photograph. But I, I yeah. guess what I'm saying is, um, I, don't, I don't know, except that sometimes if, you, if the end result is with that wiry salt and pepper, then I would put the white, on later and maybe have a dark okay. face but not necessarily okay. not necessarily because sometimes the hair underneath is dark do you know what i mean yeah yeah i'm with you so but it doesn't really matter to be honest it, okay you know, this process is still gonna work um yeah so we'll just keep going so if anyone's got any questions are they people feel it fairly happy with their shape i mean I know I can see that now and I start to see, oh, I can already see that I haven't got this bit going in as it should. So what I would do is um, have a paintbrush loaded with that background colour, which for me is just from, from this tin. Yeah. So if I think, oh, I forgot to put the ear in more, then I just paint over it. So I have a paintbrush that's loaded in that background colour and then I can just, like, do that and put that that ear in there, see? So also if I think, oh, that's too, that's coming out too much, then I can just kind of paint it like that. Well, that's better. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. So you would uh -huh. use... At this stage, if you think, oh, my shape's not quite right, then load one of your brushes with the background colour and just go, just go from white to the background colour to sort of until you get it right, yeah? Until you think, oh, I'm quite happy with that. I mean, to be honest, do as much as you can in terms of getting the shape right now because it will pay big dividends going forward with with your painting okay 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 should we go to the next stage so the next stage we're going to is tone so we're getting we're just going to do it first of all in black and white okay so we're going these are the stages so we've got the shape and then we're going to do the tone which is now and then after that, we'll worry about, well, we won't worry about them. We'll just have fun with the, the, the details, like the eyes and the fur. And then we'll put some colour over that, okay? So that's the process. That's the process. And also sometimes towards the end, there are little details like the white in the eye and stuff that you would leave to last that really like just suddenly bring the painting to life. And I always think before you've done that, 
that you know the, the, their eyes that you know it's not really doesn't look much at all but once we get to that stage yeah you'll have a cracking painting so is everybody can people tell me in the chat if they're ready to go to tone now and they're happy with their shape yeah yes okay or just tell me verbally that's fine okay so i'm having a drink of water because it's really hot here today is it hot where you are mark up north it is yeah yeah it's scorching actually mm. yeah so yeah can't complain uh, yeah i mean to be honest i think that's why the other 10 people that bought tickets aren't here <laughs> probably at the beach it's probably too hot to be inside paint can't blame you? them yeah you know what people people go a bit um crazy outside don't they when when the weather gets yeah like, yeah okay because we might only have five more days of this weather left anyway True. I'll stop yakking, yak. But I was sort of yakking because I'm thinking we want this to dry. Yeah. I get my I get my hair dry and just. There we go. Okay. I just did that because I put it on quite thickly. So. Okay, so now we're going to go into tone. So what I want people to do is put some black paint now in your um, on your. I've even lost the word for this on your palette. Yes. So some black paint, or did you do that before? No, not yet. Okay, so I'm going to go and look at my picture. I'm just looking for the colour one. Anyway, so I'm just using this black and white one. To put in some details. Now, what we're going to do now, and this might seem a bit counterintuitive, a bit weird, but it's the process, so just trust it, is we're going to turn our pictures upside down. Yeah? See, like this. Yeah? And actually, we could have done that before when we're getting the shape. It might have been a bit easier. Because... It's much easier to paint um, paint the shape when you don't really know what it is, you know. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Or maybe you don't think so. Anyway, <laughs> you certainly want to think about it abstractly. It can be a lot easier. Okay, so I'm looking at this now. And I can see there are white areas and dark areas. Okay, so I'm going to start to put in some of these dark areas, working upside down. So, oh, this was the dog. This was the last dog I did. That was the dog I was talking about, um, Mark, that I <laughs> yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if yours is more salt and peppery than that. A little bit more than that, yeah. But I can see, yeah, along the same lines. Yeah, so I started with the dark. Yeah. And then really... The fur was, I did it with an yeah. old toothbrush at the end. Okay, fine. So <coughs> I've, I've made this little pole thing on my easel so I can put the picture next to it. Yeah. So can you see that? So then I can just work, <coughs> work. Yeah. See it all at once. So. You could get some or sticky tape, put it on the wall, or you could just hold it like you are, Cassandra. That's fine. But if 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 you if you've got some sticky tape, or you can put it somewhere where you can see it. So obviously I'll put it upside down because I really just want to get the tones, get the tones in as tones. So I'm gonna get 
a, a brush with some black paint now and start putting in those darker areas. So really just, it's like um, Collingwood, black and white, okay? Or Arsenal for the UK people. Is that right? Are they black and white? Newcastle. Newcastle. That's Alicia. right, no pies. Yeah, right, okay. To go the pies. Yeah. Um, so, are you okay, Sandra? Have you got some black paint? Yeah, I've got some black paint. So, but I mean, my my dog, like it's he's he's not black. So I'm just doing the shading. The darker bits, you're just saying, just go with the black, even though they're not black. You know what I mean? They're just yeah, darker. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Do you want to show me a photo? Yeah, so, yeah, no, well, yeah, I know what you're saying. So I would say, like, the darkest, <laughs> yeah. the what darkest bits are black. So the, to put the darkest bits, so I'd say the darkest bits of the nose, the two eyes, the darkest bits of the fur, so the lines coming down, but also, um, a little bit around the face. So maybe you want to go like, just put the eyes in black and a little bit of black on the nose and a little bit here and then go to gray and do the rest in gray. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so the darkest areas in black. I know what you mean, it's tricky because it's not actually black, okay? Yeah. But, then okay, so what I suggest is I'm gonna I'm gonna change my mind. Don't go black then. Just go for a dark grey. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. So we just add um, add white to the black because I don't have dark grey. Yeah. So so just a little bit of white to the black. Yeah. So I'm I'm. I'm, I'm not using a black. It's a paint's grey, but it looks black. It's very dark. Okay. So depending on what you're painting. Yes. Does that make sense, Abby? Do you want to show me your tiger? Oh, hang on. I'll unmute you. Abby. Oh. Okay, it's all right. If you don't want to speak, that's fine. Okay, so um, so I'm going to start to put these darker areas in. I, I, the, the blackest ones, yeah? So it's probably not going to be that much. Oh, there's another person coming. Why does this going to be too dark? Pardon? You feel like that's too dark? Yeah, to put it on, but it's too, it's just, it's not him, because he's, he's... Is, is, are, you, is, are you working upside down? Yeah. Okay. Um, then lighten your black to, to be a bit lighter. So add a bit more white, basically. Yeah? yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but don't, don't, don't go lighter than your darkest bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but he's not, he's not, he's not even grey. Like he's that sort of um, mustardy sort yeah. of colour. What I'm saying is we're not doing colour yet, okay? Yeah, all right, so I'm okay and just do it, okay? I, I do everything first in black and white. Yeah. And, and then we put the colour in. So okay. especially with your dog, what I would do for your dog is, um, well, what we're doing. So put in all the little bits of, um, don't, if you, if you don't want to really go, just go, go for a mid grey or, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Because you can yeah. put darker bits in later. Yeah. Um, and then later we put the colour on. All right, no over worries. the top. Okay. Yeah. So it's about getting those tones right. And then we choose that, we, then we get that mustardy colour. And we yeah. sort of put it over the top. And then yeah. up behind are the tones. Now, having yeah. said that, I know that you're working watercolour, aren't you? No. I know Abby's working watercolour. Yeah. So I think 
if I was working in watercolour, then you definitely don't want to go too dark, probably, Abby. But um, it's really hard without seeing your picture. Oh, I keep freezing. I'm sorry, Abby. But if you can hear, and also, Abby, I can send you the video later. So if you feel like you've missed a bit, you can go back and see. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, and feel free to, yeah, to make, if you think the black is too dark, to go a bit, because I'm only going to do a few bits in black, you'll see. So I'm going to do, like, between the ear, here, like that. And then there's an eye, there's a dark spot there. Now, I don't even want to think about it as being an eye. I'm just thinking about it as being a dark spot, yeah? So then there's a dark bit here. And then there's a dark <coughs> bit here. Okay, so people, you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah and yeah. the other thing is there's a, this collar. There's this collar business going on here. But this is all quite dark, so I'm just going to go in, yeah, without hesitation to get this. Uh, here. Okay, so I'm just doing the blackest bits, which is like something going on here. Okay, and I can see that the shape is a little bit different, so I'm just kind of adjusting the shape a little bit as I go. Okay, I'm nearly finished with my black and I'm, then I'm going to go to a lighter shade of, of grey. Okay. And then if you think you put too much black somewhere, just go over it with the white, which I, was what I just did there. Okay? So there's no mistakes, just keep going. So now I'm going to mix a bit of black and white, maybe 50-50, and start to put some grey areas in. Okay? So now we're really, we're really painting but we're just painting black and white tonal representation. So here I've got some black and some gray and white here. And I'm just gonna go and try and get all those areas of the different shades of gray onto the painting. Does that make sense? Has anyone got any questions? No, seems fine. No, okay, so we'll just, we'll just paint for a bit. I'll put on some, would you like me to put some music on? No, you can. no, well, I don't know. Any requests? No, the thing is, I'll, I'll keep gas bagging, giving you tips as I paint. Because mm. we haven't talked about brushes, I would recommend Cassandra getting like some bigger brushes, definitely. Yeah. So get some big ones, get a, get a range. So, I mean, I just, I buy, I buy lots and of, I mean, I've got hundreds of brushes. Um, you know, sometimes I just buy these really cheapy ones, um, which are like n n not much at all on Amazon, but they're fine to do, um, 
when you're working large. Um, yeah, so but using a bigger brush, uh, these are just ones from the hardware store. Doesn't You don't have to spend a lot of money, but it just really helps you at the beginning to get, and also to get that variety of, of um, brush and, and lines. Because um, if it, it, well, it depends what style you're painting in, but you want to have a variety of different marks with different brushes, ideally, I think. Um, I think so, yeah. Okay, so, but you can spend a lot of money on your brushes and they will, but really it's how you look after them. So, you know, that, that you clean them with, um, a bit of soapy water and stuff afterwards and dry them properly is really the best thing and not leave them soaking in the water, which mm. I sometimes do and it really does ruin them. <laughs> okay. So I'm not really like trying, going for perfection here either. I'm just being really like, I've got a big thick brush. I'm just sort of whacking it on and not, not worrying about. So I'm just getting like the main areas of shading. And also like trying to get where these bits of, the dog's got this funny collar harness thing on. So it's about trying to get that right. Yeah. So it sort of comes up between the legs here like that. And then across So I think I forgot to put in this bit here. I don't know. But anyway, I'm just I'm just adding on on that. I'll start there. It's sometimes nice to let the um the red background come through too. So leave you don't have to completely cover. You can leave it out. Um yeah. Yeah. It'll leave that red. Ah. Okay. I often use my fingers. I didn't know if it's going to work in the watercolors. So, like, if I feel like I've made a mistake, just to move the paint around the canvas a bit, it's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, yeah. So now I'm going to do the ear and just try and get that shading around the ear. So this is like probably this is the first stage of. <coughs> And then I'm going to go to the next stage. So to put in even more level, a high level of detail. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Pardon? Yeah. 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 So do, you, do you want to show me what you guys are up to if you want and I can like give you some feedback, like how's it going? 
So, so where do you want to show your photo, um, Mark? Show us your photo. Okay, so cool. That's going well. Oh my god, that's really good. So, okay, so you've that's fine. So you've done your black and your white. So now yeah. get some grey, and you can start to like put but put some grey between the the um the nose and the eyes there and a bit coming down, that bit coming down here, you can start to get those grey bits in. Okay. Uh, and and, and the, the the little bit of the collar, that's that's a, a grey and maybe start to put in some shade, you know, some of the darker areas underneath the arms and, and down the bottom there. Well, I yeah. thought I'm only going to do him down as far as sort of Oh, sorry, sorry. There. I didn't realise that that's where yeah, you were stopping. That's, yeah, so that's what I stopping. said just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. But I did yeah. wonder, I mean, he's, he's, he's brown and white and black. Yeah. So should I put him brown next or go for the grey or...? No, I'd go for grey. Okay. Yeah. We can put the brown on top of it later. Because okay. at the moment, we just want to get something that looks... Um, a black and white version, yeah, and then so we put yeah. the color on. I mean, okay. this, this is um, depending on you know what style you go for, but it's it's my style, which is kind of quite going for a realistic. Show me uh -huh. yours, Cassandra. Awesome. Oh, that's great. Okay, so <laughs> so this whole area here is it's gray. So. From, from from his nose, the top of his nose, to underneath, under here, between his two front legs, yeah, that's all grey. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So you want to put that in. So stop, if you can not think about that as being like your dog, but think about yeah. it more abstractly, that you you also might want to get the red and come up a bit because it looks to me that there's too much space between the nose. And the um, the the bottom of the leg, for instance. Do you know what I mean? Oh, between here and here. Yeah, but but you can just cheat that by just putting a little bit of extra red, so you're bringing it together. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I think you should put more grey here. Yeah. So go for it. maybe just leave what you've done because that's really good, and go for a lighter, slightly lighter grey. Okay. But, but that's 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 all um, a, a darker shade, yeah. 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 yeah cool. And then um, also the line. Oh, you've got a little bit there. The line, the sh the shade um, behind the front leg. That's cool. <coughs> yeah. Great. So keep yeah. going. But yeah. All right. Put that, put that shading in between the nose and the legs and, and also around the eyes. You can see those darker bits. Yeah. See, then, so that's like a mid-grey. So 50% white, 50% black. Okay. Or all, all in there, or a little bit lighter than that even, maybe. Yeah. So if anyone else wants to come on video and show me, that's like totally cool. Um, or just unmute yourself, that's fine. Okay. Oh. So I'm just working in a few more details. So I'm just using different shades of grey, putting in, a, you know, a black detail there that I missed. This is a bit darker. 
Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I find it is quite tricky. And I, I often, you know, over the course of a painting, there'll be three, it'll take me a few times to get the ears right. Okay, so. So I might not, I might not go into as much detail as I might do. Just so we can get, so I can go through the whole process with you. Yeah. So like, I'm not going for. The most detailed pet portrait, you know, I'm not going to go into my fine brushes and go like that but you're going to get all the different steps you go to. So for instance, if, if this was um, a commission, I might, you know, spend a bit more time on this stage. But because we're doing a, a Zoom and I want to kind of go through all the steps, I'm just, um, see, I'm just going to put this whole ear as, as grey, but that's quite, that's quite fun. Um, you know, at some point soon, I'm going to stop with the black and white and we'll go to the next step. Okay. So, so that we, I can go through all the steps. So I think I'm nearly, I'm nearly put in as much sort of a black and white version. Yeah. For today because otherwise you won't get to to go through everything so it's fine like if you don't want to come with me through these next processes and just want to work on your tonal getting your tonal areas right that's fine um i'm just going to crack on so you can see here i've got my black brush my white brush my grey, I'm just mixing it all up a bit more now. Yeah. So we're getting in the swing of things, so to speak. Um, this is actually white. Okay. That. Okay, Philida. Philida's here. Hi. Hi, Philida. You're a bit late. I might I'll send you the video, Philida, because you've missed out on a bit. Are you okay? Oh, and Amy's going. Oh, have you gone, Amy? Oh, thanks so much for offering this class. Oh, okay, cool. So you're still here. I can I can send you all the video. That's fine. Um, I can yeah I can send you all a link to the video. That's fine. So so for instance, Philida, you've come quite late. But it's all right, just I'll send you the video and you can rewind. So basically, we're just still at the first stage. Well, sec well, there's two steps before this. The first one was getting the shape. Hi, Philida. I don't know if you're painting along or... Okay, just to watch. Okay. Okay, so here's where we are. Um, we're at the stage of just doing the portrait in black and white. So 
I don't know if you've done painting before, fill it up. Maybe you're a painter, I don't know. Okay. So I'm just doing the just doing the representation, the tones. Yeah, so the black and white tones. So this is this is my process with every dog portrait. Okay. Giving away all my secrets. All my secrets, so all you guys can be ace um, <laughs> portrait painters as well. And you will be, you will be. I mean, I can already see everybody's getting it. See, and then it's like magic. Oh my god! But um, I can see I didn't get it completely right. Hi, um, but it's it's a start. Yeah. See, it's a start. Yeah. So So this might be my messiest pet portrait ever, but I feel like you get the techniques, okay? So cuz I could stand here for another 20 minutes looking at my black and white getting it all completely correct. Um or what I want to do is just show you the other few steps. Unless you want me to, if unless people want to just stay here for the last um, 10 minutes or so and finish. What, what are people thinking? Can you tell me in the chat what you want to do? Uh, fill it out. If you can't get it to work, go the bottom left is the mute and unmute. But I'll send you the video, okay? So is there another lesson tomorrow? No, but I can have more if you want. I mean, we could do another one um, if you want to keep going with your paintings. So, Abby, you said stay, please. Do you mean you want to stay with this black and white and keep going with that? I'm not sure. Can you unmute yourself? Because I can't hear you. Sorry. Or, or write it in the chat. Okay, stay. Yeah, you want to keep watching. So that's fine. I mean, I don't mean I'm going to go. What I'm saying is um, I might move on from the black and white stage, from the tones. Yeah? Are you okay with that? Yeah. You can't, you can't hear me. Okay, well, you might just have to look in the video, um, Amy, sorry. Okay, so as you can see, we're a long way from perfection here, but I feel like, you know, we've got the bones, the bones of, of what's going on. You know, it's not too bad. It's not horrific, but I can see that there's areas that need to be fixed up a bit. Um, so for instance, talking, when I was talking about negative space before, that's quite a square there. I can see that would help to um, have that a bit more square going across the bottom here like that. Yeah. So I'm going back to my red thing, my red um, thing, my red paint here, and I'm just going to get the shape just kind of like. Fill in some bits I might have missed, so I'm putting a bit more white in here. Um, white, do you, <coughs> okay, so, so I'm just touching up a little bit with the, with the black and white. And I know I said I was going to leave it. It's really hard to not just keep playing with it. But it's like, I'm going to give myself a talking to any minute now and just say, stop with the black and white, crack on. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. You know, we're just going to work with that. Whatever, whatever's going on here, we're going to work with. Sometimes I get obsessed with like little details, like the shine at the end of the year. I was getting a little bit obsessed with that then. 
and really wanting to get that where the sun is shining on the furry ear. And you just have to talk yourself out of that getting into a detail at this stage. Just talk yourself out of it and say, crack on, keep going. Don't get bogged down in the eyes or the little details of the nose fur or the bit of light on the end of the ear. Or just at this stage, just really focus on getting the tones right. And, and so try and work the whole painting at once, okay? So if you want to be a good painter, really, you need to be working your whole canvas at once. And that might mean, um, you know, standing up and painting so that you can step back and look at it all the time, so that you can, like, look at the whole thing. Because if you're painting sitting down, like, it's okay, but it's, it's, it's much, if you are painting sitting down, it's much easier to sort of get into a detail and not look at the whole thing. Um, so I, um, if you can paint standing up, uh, and if that's comfortable for you, it can be a lot easier because you, you step back and look at your painting. It's much easier to quickly step back. See, I'm stepping back now and I can see that that goes like that, you know. Just step back and look at it and you can see um, what, what needs to be done next a lot easier without getting bogged down in the details. Okay, that's a lot of information. Okay, so colour. Okay, so this beagle is coming along. And, and I'm going to go for colour now because we we haven't got that much more time. I'm, I'm really happy to go over a bit of time. I don't know what people's schedules are. But, and you've started, my, everyone's started painting now. So how are people feeling with their painting? Tell me how you think you're going. Are you feeling like... Yeah, happy. You're happy with your black and white tones now? Yeah. I mean, this is really a fast forward pet portrait, you know, but <laughs> but you'll have something in the end. You don't have to spend a long time on something for it to be really good. I know, you know, if you see a David Hockney painting, you might think, wow, he spent hours on that. It probably didn't take him that long. Um, he's very fast. I mean, some painters do take a long, long time, but, you know, you can knock things out a lot faster than you think. Um, I mean, for me, I sort of knock things out and then it sits in the studio and then as the weeks or days go by, I notice things that might need fixing up. But it's really hard to see all of that in the first few hours with the painting. But you can, I guess it's like, you know, you can get 80 or 90% of it down and then the other 10%, which is, I guess, sometimes the tricky bit or where the magic happens as well, um, that can take a bit longer. Okay, so I love that I got some water on my picture, so it kind of went a bit funny, but it should be all right. I can work with that, okay. So what I'm gonna recommend now is, is people will do some color. Um, so I'm gonna put go back to upside down painting this dog, or I could not. What do people think about that? Did that work for people to go upside down with their mm. portrait? No, so. You weren't sure. What do you think, Cassandra? Did that work for you? Is that a I'm thumbs sure. up or not? Sort of, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, so I'm not expecting to it to be, you know, fantastic. But wow, you're doing amazing. Show me. Um. Oh, can you? Oh, oh wow. she's gone frozen. It is winter in Melbourne. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> great. Oh my God, that's I, I bad. Even, I don't have the nose and all, they're not really, it doesn't feel like it's important, but anyway. So could you want to show me both? If you show me that next to the picture, I can tell you what maybe. Uh, I mean, I feel like the nose, I think that's pretty good. Man, for a first, for a first go, I feel like there's a bit more shading that you need to put underneath, like between the nose. 
I'm just wondering, yeah, no, between, yeah, uh, yeah, it depends on the light, doesn't it? But you can see how there's this little like, white patch on her chin. Yeah. You probably want to paint like darker around it and then leave the white thing. But okay. the, other, the other thing you can do is start to soften the nose. So get like a mid gray. Okay. And just put some more tones there. Okay. But it's looking good. That's amazing. When you say the first time you've done it, is the first time you've done painting? First time ever. Mm. I mean, Except I don't. <laughs> That's amazing. Are you are you loving it? Do you like? Yeah, it? I'm, loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. <sighs> so good. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely going to get into it. Yeah, yeah. But you're going to have a really nice painting. Keep going. That's amazing. Yeah. My daughter will love it. I've got a younger daughter who absolutely adores this dog. And, you know, she'll love it, whatever it ends up looking like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know. it's not, it's not, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a process. You're not going to be like, the main yeah. thing I reckon is that you enjoy it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but this is, these are good ways of, getting to something that you're really quite happy with, I think. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get on to some colour. So this dog here, I think it's just, there's some red, um, grey, and some blue and pinky bits, and this is um, a sort of yellow ochre and brown bit there. So I only use three colours, would you believe, in my paintings. So I only use cadmium red, cobalt blue, and um, yellow ochre, okay? So I find it much easier to work with a restricted palette to get some a realistic representation. You know, it's worse the more I touch it. Oh, yeah? Okay, well then just stop, <laughs> stop for a bit. Just forget the nose. And also... Yeah, so the, uh, the upside down thing is really helpful when you get stuck on details like a nose or an eye, because what you want to do is look at it as, a, as an abstract shape, not a nose. So I might, you might even want to go upside down against Cassandra and try that again. So put your painting upside down. Uh, link's dropping a bit. Okay. Oh, that's better. Cassandra, put your painting upside down and have another look side by side. And it might tell you if that nose needs to move or be a bit smaller. Okay. So, so what painting is about, it's about training your eye. Yeah. So you can see stuff. It's not, it's not like just about putting strokes on canvas, which I'm sure you get. Everybody's frozen. Have you frozen too, Mark? Oh, no, you're okay. You seem to have lost your video, Angie. Have you? Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Have I gone off? Hang on. Hello. Oh, there All you right. are. Can you hear me? Yeah, can that's you... better. You're moving and I can hear you now. Oh, yeah. I think the Wi-Fi went off for a second. Yeah. How weird. Okay. So, I was just saying I used three colours. So cobalt blue, cadmium red, yellow ochre. So that's all I'm going to demonstrate with today. And I want to say that it's much harder to paint a realistic looking painting um, with if you've got like, so all these colours here, I never ever use. So I never use these bright greens or, or you know, this is like a bluey, purpley. Oh, ultramarine. Okay, so sometimes I use ultramarine for um, a sky, but a, a little bit. But generally, it's cobalt blue, and then maybe a few other blues. But but for the purposes of like these pet portraits, it really does help to have a restricted palette with this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some colours on my palette. So some cobalt blue, some cadmium red, and some yellow ochre. Okay, guys. So we nearly run out of time here. But 
I hope that you feel like your portrait is progressing. Yeah? yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to crack on here. I really... I mean, to be honest, when I did... Um, so normally I would do a whole day to do a dog portrait if I was doing it as a class. Um, but I think for a Zoom... Oh, have I stopped again? Oh, no, I'm okay. Sorry, I, I thought I froze for a minute. But for a Zoom, I feel like an hour and a half, two hours is, is long enough. Would people you agree? Can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Actually, can you hear me at all? Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Hello. Can't hear and it's gone awful oh so it's not just me i, I was just thinking i'm, I'm so silly I, I can't get the internet to work properly are we okay <laughs> yeah okay Oh, we so, yes. So, Angie, are you mixing the your colours to make the brown or whatever? No, no. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get. Um, I probably I've got the um, sorry yellow ochre. So I'm just going not mixing colours at this stage. Um, so I'm thinking for this beagle, a yellow ochre with a bit of my grey and my Payne's grey is enough to get those colours of the beagle and maybe a bit of red to warm it up a oh, bit. All right. yeah. So we are going into mixing colours okay. now. Yeah. So I'm not just using cadmium red or um, uh, cobalt blue or yellow ochre by itself, although sometimes I do. I'm mixing them. Yeah. So I am. But for the purpose of the beagle, I would <coughs> use my main colour is going to be yellow ochre with a bit of red. And then okay. and then a bit of blue when it, it, you know when we're talking shadows. So shadows aren't really, it's really helpful to think of shadows as being blue or purple, not black. Yeah. Which shade of blue are you using, Angie? Pardon? Which shade of blue? I'm using cobalt blue. Cobalt so blue. I'll write down the colours that I'm using. Thank you. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, we've got a new participant, Mark. Don't know where they are, though. I can only see, I can't see everyone. That's okay. Oh, hi, Marg. Can you unmute yourself? Hi. Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh. not muted. Hi, Marg. You're very late. <laughs> Have you got a note from your parents? Because I don't know. I didn't understand the whole password thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, I'm so it sorry. Took me a while to get on. I thought I didn't. Put yeah, it I on. tried earlier. It, it was my password. I was looking for a password password. They wanted my password. I didn't realize that. So anyway, I'm getting. Oh, that's it. that's. So yeah. I I you've got to log in. You've minutes. got to log into Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I didn't understand what they were talking about. Anyway, okay. That's okay. Where are you, Mark? I'm in. Toronto. Oh, awesome. That's fantastic. So Where now we've got five countries. Um, I'm, I'm in a Dorset in the UK and, and Mark's up in the Midlands. And then we've got Cassandra from Melbourne. And um, so I hope people didn't want to be anonymous because it's not happening. And <laughs> who else have we got? Abby, where are you? Oh, going to unmute Abby. Hello. Oh no. Anyway, so Abby's somewhere in England. 
Where? E. I can't hear. New? New somewhere? I don't know. Sorry, I can't hear very well. Um, and then someone, Alicia from Texas. So there you go. We're going global with the pet portrait. So you've missed quite a bit, Mark, but I can send you all the video links so you can watch it later, okay? So I'm just gonna start to yeah, like- Yeah, that's what I was, I, I just noticed you have record. So I think it, it, you have record up in the corner there. Oops, no, yes. I'm not on, yeah, no, I'm not on mute. So you're recording. If you could send that to me, that would be great. Yeah, so I'll send you the link to the recording. Yeah, I'll, I'll send I it think that would make more sense. Well, I'm going to send it to everybody because I feel like this is, you know, this is painting on steroids. I'm really sort of like pushing through the process uh -huh. um, so people can get a sense of maybe if we did uh, like a whole day course, what you would learn. Because really, these five steps that I go through, so the shape and then the tone and then the colour and then the fur and then the eyes and the details, you know, you would do that in a whole day to like to, to finish with something like that you know a, a, a really finished portrait but um yeah so, but this is where we are now so we're going into color and i only use these three colors i'm going to write it in the chat so it's um yellow ochre and i mean you can you can use your own versions of these colors Yellow ochre. Um, I don't know if I spelled ochre right. O C H O C H R E. Yeah, no, I did. Um, cadmium red. Cadmium red. So that's always a very expensive um, colour paint, cad cadmium red. But, you know, I would recommend you, um, you know, if you can afford it, buy, buy the proper cadmium red. It's just, you know, just a drop of it will just give you that warmth um, and mix really well with the other colours you're using it with. And cobalt blue, I have to check the spelling in that too. Cobalt. Oh, B-A-L-T, sorry. Okay. These are my three colours. And then black and white. Okay. So it's saying my internet connection is unstable, which is very annoying. So I'm just going to crack on with colour now. Can people hear me? Can people hear? I can't hear you, Mark. Okay, use the chat. I don't know what to do. No, it keeps breaking. Okay, use the chat. Can't see you, MG. Okay, I don't know why you can't see me. Hello, anybody there? I'm here. Oh, hello. <laughs> I can't see Angie at all. I can. You? I can oh, hear right. you. I can hear you, but I'm struggling with Angie. I don't know why. And she keeps freezing on me. Uh, she says yeah. she's... Uh... Angie, can you hear I can see her now. Can she hear me, I wonder? No, I don't think she can hear anyone. Oh, she's put something in the chat. Let me read it out. I am. I here. can. I can <laughs> see and hear you. I can. Oh, I have. Oh, we can hear you, Angie. Oh, there we are. I don't know what's going on, really. It's just gone a bit funny. So we'll just crack on really quickly with the colour mixing. So. I'm going to mix, 
I'm going to mix some yellow, yellow ochre with a little bit of red to, to try and get this, the colour of the beagle, yeah? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So for you, Cassandra, your dog is kind of a mustardy colour? Yeah, I've got, yeah. So how good are you at mixing colours? Oh, look, I've just, uh, I've just done it. I've just gone for it. Oh, you've yeah. made the colour? Yeah. Fantastic. Are you happy with it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, I don't know, it's a bit mustardy, but... Do you want to show me? Um, go on. <laughs> go on. Um, uh, okay. Okay, so that was um, what you needed to do is to not like have any to keep the tone but just to like maybe a bit lighter with the mustard yeah it's a bit yellow yeah. maybe is it it's, yeah, it's too yellow yeah so you need to um it's all right like that's a really good start and then mix another color so mix get the mustard color that you've got and then add some um i mean i don't know if you've got any raw rumba there I've got lemon yellow. I don't know. No, that won't do it. What what colours have you got? See, this is why I just work with three colours too. It's much easier to mix everything. What are you what are you up to, Mark? Do you want to show me? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Great. So that's coming along. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite pleased. You pleased? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I need to. Uh, I think now I probably need to go in with a very fine brush to put in the fine. No, I mean, you want to do stuff. that at the very end. Okay. Yeah. First, you want to have most of it done before you get into those details. So you want to have all your colour done. Right. Um, I would say. Okay. So the same with um, Cassandra. So you know how. You want to keep working your colour so that there aren't those edges. So you've jumped like you've gone from the mustard straight into the light colours. Okay, so what we're going to start to do now is you want to soften those edges. Yeah. So before, yeah, so forget about going into details now. You just want to have like a soft, soft range of colours true to your picture. Okay, so always look at your picture, refer to your picture, and you can't go wrong, you know. And it's just developing that looking. So, you know, maybe this one you, you're not happy with, but the next one you'll kind of really know what you're doing then. Maybe you'll have some more time because this is only an hour and a half, which is really <laughs> short. But um, I will send you an invitation to do like a whole day where people will get time to do to do things in 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 a, in a so so for now if we had the whole day we'd still be doing our tones yeah and then you'd be showing me and I'd be saying okay and then we would have a tonal piece I mean this is great this is great because you can still progress from here beautifully because um, it's not like you just do color and then you're done but you want to have like your photo the way things colors don't just stop you want to have that gradation and the other thing um, is that makes the portrait look like the difference between something really flat looking 2d and three-dimensional is to put in the shadows yeah so like this beagle here it's half of its face is in shadow yeah so this is all the shadow and at the end of the day that's what will make this into like a really realistic looking or um, like the photo, uh, uh, that sort of pet portrait. And it's, it's getting those shadows in. So after I've got them in in black and white, then I work into it with, with the purple. 
<clears throat> because these these colors here they're, they're like a, it's a mixture of the blue and the red yeah and here here that's 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 a blue so I can just put a little bit of blue which I've mixed with gray over the top of that shadow there um, so I'm always like referring to the photo. Um, always refer to the photo. I mean, yeah, and certainly take a whole day if you can, or just work on it in bits, like follow the process. <clears throat> and I'll send you a sheet with the process in. So to do your shape, and then to do your black and white, and then to do the colour what colours you need and then mix those okay so for here like this yellow ochre which i've just mixed really quickly but i've got quite a lot of water on my brush too so i might just like go in like this see see how i'm going over the top um cassandra so i'm not going in with like a flat color but i'm sort of just shading over the top the the colors yeah like that so you're going, but you go over your greys with the colour or you don't? Yes, yeah, so I'm going over the greys with the colour, see? Yeah. Yeah, like that. And then all this is... So in the same way that we did the tones at the beginning in an inexact way, yeah, because we're just doing this in like five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see I'm just going... So it's not like a really flat colour. It's a watered down, a watered down version. But yeah, see how I'm putting in those that beagle, um, beagle bits. Yeah, and then it's got a bit here. Those those yellow bits of the beagle. Yeah. So I'm just putting it over here. I mean, this bit isn't really. So I'm not going to leave that just yellow over the top of the grey. I'll go in with a shadow. So I'm going to go in with the red and the blue later. But can you see how already, like that's beginning to come to life, just by putting like that little bit of colour? Can you see? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So then I'll then I'll probably put some um, of these greys with a bit of blue. Um, so I'll, in the same way that we went from black to white, black to white, to get those tones, you want to go from warm to cool. So from your red to your blue, from your red to your blue. So, so we're, we're doing warm and cool now. Okay. So there you go. That's like simple painting in a nutshell. That, that's my 30 years of, well, even 35 years of art courses, guys, in an hour and a half. <laughs> Thank you. And 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 when you go to do the eyes, like if you're working from your phone or whatever, really like just zoom in and get as much of that detail as you can. But don't don't do it till the end because it's like this magic happens when you get those eyes in. And quite often, I mean, I have to I have to like completely paint out the eye because it's in the wrong spot, like right towards the end of the painting because it's, there's just like a tiny tilt of the head of the animal, you know, and, and, it, and you've put the eye just not in the right spot. So, the, you know, the mistakes are all part of it. And really it's just about not being scared to like, just paint over it and paint it again. But I mean, I'm quite pleased with this. I'm going to keep going with this. And then it's got these red collar. So I'll get my cadmium red and a bit of blue on that. And that's quite fun. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna crack on with this, um, and I love doing the tongue too. So that's cadmium red with a bit of white always, and that really brings the animal alive as well. Okay, is that enough? Yeah, yeah that's, that's thank you. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna send you guys an email um, with, or maybe I'll just keep going. I could record the whole thing then. Okay, I'm going to keep going with this. Um, so I'll send you the video and, and you can watch the what happened to this portrait because um, I'm, 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 I'm having a magical day uh, alone at home. So 
I'm just going to keep painting now. So you guys can go and then I'll send you the video and um, finish this dog, which is called Summer. Okay. Well, thank so, you very much, Andy. Well. No worries. Nice to meet you, Mark and Cassandra. I don't know where everybody else is. Is there anyone else? I'm not watching. I don't mind carrying Sorry. on watching. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, hi, Abby. Yes, I can. I can. That's cool. So I'm just going to send a video now. Okay. So you guys can leave. I'm. I'm gonna. I am gonna keep going. If uh, you want. I'm up because it's nearly one o'clock here. So <laughs> you need to go to bed, Cassandra. That's good on you. Going up to one in the morning. I know. Just, thank you so much. It's been absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, I just hate bad. the fact that I had internet problems. Yeah, yeah. Just I didn't know why. Hear me. I just really enjoyed the session. But I just hate the fact that I had internet problems. But I don't know if you can hear me. It was absolutely yes. brilliant, Angie. I can. Thank you so much. Can people put a review on my Facebook page? Yeah, yeah. we we'll do. Um, when you send us the video, send the link and we can do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. That'd be great. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. And if you've got any questions, but I'll probably do some longer sessions on Zoom. Oh, wonderful. Do people think that would be that would work for them? Like because Yeah, I very do, much so, yeah. I had a whole day, um, which is what I used to do on the Airbnb experiences. So I would, it would be a whole day of painting a pet. Yeah, um, that'd be good. With breaks, you know, we'd ha we'd, <laughs> yeah, you have to have breaks for food. But <laughs> it means that you can take more time on each of the stages. I'm so glad you loved it, Abby. I loved it too. It was so nice to meet you. I can't believe we had people from five countries, didn't we? <laughs> Australia, Indeed, Canada. brilliant. Australia, Canada, America. The UK. Yeah, that was it, wasn't it? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, guys. Happy painting. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 I don't know Bye. what to press now. I think I just press. Um, Honey, how do I leave? Bye. I don't know. See ya. Bye. Bye. All the best. Thank See you. You too. Bye. See you, Pat. Bye. Bye, Mark. Bye. I don't know how to end it. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's just crashed.